I don't track this list as well. Alright. I have to inform the recital. Morning, everyone. I'm sorry. Um, any idea where Tanya or Sarah are? Mm -hmm. I think Sarah works overnight, so it's like a 50 50 if she wakes up to work on that. Oh, really? Yeah. That's kind of good to work overnight when you're working. Well, she has like eight hours every day, yeah. and she can't really work. I think mean, that's what she says, so she's like, I can do it overnight and make up for class today. Um, mm -hmm. Because sometimes she's here, she's really tired, and some days she's not here. I thought it was just me. That's just how it is. You know, when I talk, people tend to get bored. No. All right. So I bet if you did your okay. lectures, I bet if you did your lectures like Donald Duck, people yeah. would get bored. Yeah. That, that's how you get our attention. Oh. 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 Pitches at all. I just slide them across. 
the spelling any that I need to end harmonically to make the diminished seventh chord spell properly in the, in the key. So if D is the root in this next measure here, that means I must be in the key. It functions as a reading tone in the key of E flat. E flat major or minor, any, any as long as you have a real key, that's fine. But your answers must be in existing real keys. Uh, the next, uh, what I did is I treated the F of this original chord as the root, but instead of spelling F, A flat, C flat, E double flat, I just decided to end my to spell the F as an E sharp, and then I have less accidental. So I spelled it as E sharp, G sharp, E. -E. And again, E sharp is the root, that means I must be in the key of F sharp. Because E sharp is the E tone. F sharp. If E sharp is T, that means F sharp must be done. And then finally, um, I took the top note of this given chord way over here on the left. Enharmonically spelled it as a D sharp. And that's the only note I need to enharmonically spell because then it becomes G sharp in the up. And if G sharp is T of the key, that means I need some sort of A. And when we did these, remember a couple things that you can use to check your work. <coughs> you should have a fully diminished seventh chord in each one of the base, four base positions. The root position, third inversion, second inversion, first inversion. One in each base position. Also, what was something else that we talked about that you can use to check your work? Yeah, the keys, the keys that you should come up with for all of these uh, enharmonically spelled chords, they should all be uh, minor thirds away from each other. In other words, the key should spell a fully diminished seven. So in this case, I have C, B e flat, and F sharp, and A. And I know that F sharp, A, C, B e flat is a fully diminished seven. So those are just a couple small things you can do to check the work. But uh, you just got to make sure that you start out strong here. Make sure you spell the first chord correctly. No wrong notes. And then just start going up the chord, to, uh, letting each member of the chord serve as the root. And then enharmonically spell any notes you need to based on that root. So it's spelled as a fully diminished seventh chord. And then you'll be able to determine the key of the function in. Based on it's been a little while since we've done this. Does anyone have any questions about how to do that? Just a minute. Yeah. So in terms of the keys making the diminished seventh chord, mm -hmm. it, if like you spell that would be a four three in the second inversion. Does it matter like if it's like it just made it a minor? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter what inversion the keys would actually form, okay. as long as they can be put together to form the Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so, uh, there you have the different spellings there. Make sure on this test especially that you be careful about accidentals, because there's going to be lots of, lots of opportunities and opinions to write accidentals with all the chromatic parts that we learned in this unit. The next system there, uh, remember how to take a German 6 chord and spell it enharmonically as a 5-7. Remember, German 6s are enharmonic with 5-7 and vice versa. Sometimes I see on this, this coming test, in, in my experience in the past, sometimes I see students get mixed up and they'll have a pivot chord that is a German 6 in one key and they'll make it like a 2-7 or a 4-7 in another key. No, 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 no. German 6 is enharmonic with 5-7. So 5-7 and German 6 always have to be associated. Or a secondary 5-7. Like, for instance, in this, in this F-sharp example here, a 5-7 of 4, any kind of 5-7 can be then come on with the German 6. But this is what we originally learned how to do this. Basically, all you need to do is you need to, to find, uh, how do you say this, label maybe? Yeah, we need to find phi. The raised fourth scale degree, which in this case is the highest note here, the F sharp, and you just respell phi enharmonically 
we spell it as a G flat, all the other notes can remain the same, and you have A flat, C, E flat, G flat, which is a dominant seventh in, well, A flat is the root, it's a dominant seventh in. Why did I not choose D flat minor here? Because it's not a real key. That's right, it's not a real key. So it doesn't make sense as an answer. Mm -hmm. so D flat major would have to be the key here in 5 7. And the chord needs to be spelled correctly in the key you choose. Okay? So I can't leave it as A flat, C, E flat, F sharp and say, oh, that's a 5 7 in D flat. No, it's not spelled as a 5 7. That's the whole purpose for this kind of problem. Yeah. So I think also, is the only reason why the B flat and not C sharp is because it just looks closer to the original key? Well, okay. There, there, will, there, there is a way to have your answer be the key of C sharp. Because C sharp is enharmonic. You remember that um, like if I take every one of these four notes here, A flat, C, E flat, G flat, and I, if you respell every single note of a chord enharmonically, what it does is it gets it spelled correctly in the enharmonic key. So in other words, if I took this and I said it, instead of A flat, C, E flat, G flat, if I said it's G sharp, uh, B sharp, D sharp, and F sharp, I could put that in here, and I could say that's a 5-7 in the key of C sharp, and that would be a valid answer. That would be a valid answer. Mm -hmm. So, maybe this is a good thing you brought this up. What happens if you respell phi enharmonically as, as the seventh of the chord, and your, 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 your chord here doesn't fit in a real key? Do you give up? you say, I don't know how to do it, I have to lose three, four, whatever points? No, if, it, if this chord you spell here does not fit in a real key, just enharmonically be spelled every note. And they will be in a Yeah. That's all you gotta do. Okay, the next one in F sharp minor, the given chord is a 5, 7, a 4. When I'm given a dominant 7 to turn that enharmonically into the opposite chord, the German 6. What I, what I like to try to do first is can you just re enharmonically respell the seventh of the chord? If I did that, I would have F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, and what is E the, the, what is E spelled enharmonically? Okay, D double sharp. There it is. F sharp, A sharp, C sharp, D double sharp. And when you have the German 6 spelled that way, how do you know what key you're in? Which note is Do with the German 6? Yeah, the third, right? So F sharp, A sharp right there. This must be, this is Do. So that means this would be a German 6. And the key, the only real key with A sharp as its tonic is A sharp minor. <coughs> a sharp major would not be a good answer. How did I get it to work in the key of B flat? That would be another valid answer, correct answer. Well, if I, if I got this one over here with the D double sharp, does that how I can be spelled every single note? And poof, you would get it spelled correctly as a different six in the end. G flat, B flat, B flat. The last one here, 5, 7, and D. Let's enharmonically respell the seventh of the chord C as a D sharp. And then it turns it into a German 6. And you can see from this chord here that Do is F sharp. So either answer here, F sharp minor or F sharp major, would be correct because both are real keys. And German 6s and 5, 7s can be used in both major and major. Oh, that was probably a little, well, I don't know, I don't mind taking the time, as long as it's, it's, you know, getting the wheels turning and, and helping you remember, and like, oh yeah, I remember doing this, I can do this. Um, 
bring it on and take it on. Can you quickly go over again how we get to the other key? Because I'm so like, to, a, to another key? Yeah. Uh, like the, the bottom ones, where you go from like F sharp minor to B flat major minor. Like how do you figure out the key from the new key again? For instance, like if I had the chord spelled as this way and it fits mm -hmm. in A sharp, mm -hmm. but then to get it to work in B flat, is that what you're asking? Well like well how do you go from like the five, seven, and four and then figure out that B oh. flat is the oh. key for that respelling? Oh That's well okay. So the five seven of four, what I did is I just enharmonically respelled the seventh. Okay. And that puts that gives me this chord over here. Okay. And then do you know that um, as a German six, the bottom note is lay, the next note up is do, so that would give you the key. Oh, okay. So since the, the, this this is lay and the key as a German six. This one, A sharp, is Do. That means I must be in the key of A sharp. Oh, okay. It would fit and belong in the key of A sharp. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. That's how you find where, what Do is in that, for what, whatever key you're going to. Yeah. Good. Other questions about this? All right. Let's go down to section two. It says complete one of the following on the staff below, where you would write out the baseline and Roman numerals for a progression that, and I chose to do letter B. Letter B says modulates from C minor to D flat minor. Wait a second, not really. You have to enharmonically. Oh, yours doesn't even have that. Never mind. Mine's old. Modulates from C minor to C sharp minor using the German six as a pivot chord. Okay. Well, I don't think I remember all the time, but you know, when you have German six and harmonic as a five seven as a pivot, you're either going to modulate it to a key up a half step or down a half step. Unless you're using a five seven of something. But if you're just using a plain five seven, you either go up a half step. And I think, if I remember correctly, it all depends on where the German 6 is. If the German 6 is on the top of the pivot, you're going to modulate up a half step. If the German 6 is on the bottom of the pivot, you're going to go down a half step in the key. But I want to go from C minor to C sharp. Like, yeah, here's yours. So I think that means I'm going to have the German 6 on the top of my pivot chord and the 5-7 underneath. In other words, I'm going to make my pivot chord look like this. Let's see, does that work? This is going to be A flat, C, B flat, F sharp. And our the same as D sharp, B, D sharp, F sharp. All right, so find out the, how the pivot chord is first. Put the pivot chord middle, midway through your progression. What's a good chord to precede the German six fifth? We've always talked about that. What was it? The four six. It'll work in both major and minor keys. Four six is wonderful. And I know how to precede a four six. So I put a few chords in C major or C minor over there, excuse me. And then after I got to the 5, 7, and C major, then I placed a few chords in the C sharp. C sharp minor, the new key, to establish and solidify that key. Now, uh, I was supposed to write out the bass line, so I did that. I don't have to do full part writing. My question to you is, what intarnation is this? By the pivot chord, what is that called? OK, the parenthetic chord? Something that the composer doesn't actually write in real music, actual music, but it's a benefit for our eyes because I can see if the German 6 in C minor is spelled as A flat C E flat F sharp, mm -hmm. the way the chord would be spelled in the new key would be like this, D sharp, B sharp, D sharp, F sharp. And that's, I find the parenthetic chord to be especially helpful in Agent when you have to do all four voice chord writing. 
because when the chord is functioning as a 5 7, you know the F sharp, the 7 of the chord, if I were programming four voices, would have to go down and stuff. Right? What if we had to part right like a German 6 to something? How does the German 6 result? Like, you find the, off, the notes lay in, in P and you make the, make the augmented 6 and they go. P goes up and lay goes down, remember that? And they go all the way to an octave in case you have to do that. Yeah, in this case you would not have to write the full chord. I just did it just to, to remind you guys that, hey, there is, there is a parent dad chord thing that you can use to enharmonically respell your pivot. And enharmonically respelling the pivot if you had to part right all the other voices, that would give you the best chance for success there. But yeah, really all you would need to do is just maybe show the A flat. And if you wanted to, in parentheses, you could show it as in harmonic with G sharp. And that would be all you need for the bass. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, let's see if we can think about it real quick. I know we're not doing part C here. But maybe we can think about how the pivot chord would work. If we go from E flat major to D major using a Neapolitan 6 in E flat major. So the, the root of the normal two chord in this e is F. That means the root of this chord would be F flat. Yeah, so F, F flat, A flat, C flat. As it's spelled, it doesn't look like it functions in B at all. But if I respell every note F harmonically, I can make it make sense. Because if I spell this whole chord in harmonically, that's going to be E, G sharp, and B. And how does E, G sharp, B? And because this one's in first inversion,
And the other thing I was going to say about the Neapolitan is that it is a predominant functioning chord, which means it likes to go to five. Don't worry, you know, last, last test, I, I, we focused on, you know, what were the two chords that could come in between. One was like a credential 6-4, one was that 7 and 7 of 5. Don't worry about that for this test, okay? But just know that it likes to go to 5 and shoot their Oh, there was something else I was going to say. When the Neapolitan is used in a modulation as part of a pivot chord, since it's a major triad, it usually functions as a 4, a major 4 in the other key, or a major 5. So, for instance, you could have, um, I don't know what keys it would be, but you could have, for instance, an N6. Usually, when the N6 is part of a pivot chord, the other chord is a 4, 6, and then the key, or a 1, 6. Mm -hmm. And it's always in the, oh, yeah, yeah. It, it's always in the same inversion. Yep, always in the same inversion, yeah, because it's just one chord in the music. I think it would be something. It would tell you which key probably to use it. I would imagine. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no, no, no. Maybe I better. Maybe I. Well, no. There's the next. Let me just keep on going because the next one uses a seven seven, uh, uh, and harmonic fully diminished seven four. The following passage contains a modulation and then harmonic one. Analyze the flow here. Starts in F major. And then we get to this really nasty but decent sound, fully diminished seventh floor. On the third beat of this measure. It's spelled as C, E flat, G flat, B double flat. If I look at the final chords in the case, I can tell I'm going to the key of D flat major. Right? By looking at the cadence, that tells me what my new key is that I'm going to. How does the chord, the, the pivot chord, function in the key of D flat? Well, it's actually spelled correctly in the new key. It's a seven and a four, three, and seven and four. C E flat, G flat, B double flat, or G flat and so on. Now, the question becomes, how would this chord function in the old key of F? And I can think of two logical ways that it would function in the old key of F. It could function as a 7-7 seven, seven of 4, or a 7-7 seven, seven of 2. And I think those are really the only logical ways that it could function in the old key. As a 7 of 4, the 4 chord in F major would have a root of B flat. So the leading tone chord to B flat would have to have a root of A natural. Does that make sense? Can I give an A natural out of this chord? You bet. It's an harmonic B double flat. So I can think of this chord as an A natural C B flat B flat. That would place it in the third mode. I can also imagine and envision this chord as being a leading tone chord of a two. A two chord in F major has a root of G. So the leading tone chord would need a root of F sharp. Can you see how this G flat is in harmonic with F sharp? F sharp, that would have to be B double flat would have to be A natural C. And that would be a good position for it. Remember, fully diminished seventh chords can be spelled. You, you can just, they're, they're cyclical. You can just spell it basically, as long as you keep your end harmonic straight, they can be spelled in a myriad of ways. So just look for a pitch that would fit in the key. And if you don't find one, look for a pitch that might be end harmonic. If one of the pitches in the chord that would fit in the key. They're very flexible chords. 
You get a lot of freedom with them as long as you respell pitches enharmonically exactly. Don't make up new pitches. Don't change the pitches. Any questions about this? The next section I have some analysis. And I think for your example, I told you that yeah, the passage begins in G minor despite the key signature. The first two and a half measures can all be analyzed. The modulation, which goes to E minor, that's the new key that starts right here after the double ball, E minor. The modulation occurs on this fully diminished seventh chord that I circled right here in dollar three. In the old key, it's actually spelled correctly in the new key of E minor. A 7 diminished in G minor would be F sharp A C E flat. This is just D sharp F sharp A C. So think of the D sharp as an E flat. You would find out that this chord would be in second degree in the old key of G. It is spelled correctly in the new key of E. D sharp, F sharp, A, C is a 7, 7, and 3rd chord. Now the main thing is, will you be able to find and work, figure out, see how the pivot chord works in both keys? If you can see how a chord works enharmonically two different ways, that's, that's where the majority of the points will be on the test. You know, all these, other, all these other chords that you have to analyze, they'll probably be just like a half point or one point. But the main number of points is going to be, can you identify and analyze the pivot chord? Uh, this one here? Yeah. Um, that's a good question. I'm trying to think, why couldn't it be just called a neighbor system? Yeah, mm. And the answer might be, it might be because the voice leading from this chord here to this chord here has a big leap from the soprano all the way down, rather than just stepwise neighbor motion. Um, yeah, I would, I would not give you something that that strange or esoteric. That's a good question. Okay. Logging away. Here we have four voice part writing with figure bass that contains an enharmonic modulation. This is kind of what I was talking about on the first page where we just had to write the bass notes. So the excerpt contains an enharmonic modulation. Include the parenthetic chord next to the pivot chord in order to see how the pivot chord behaves or functions in the new key and how to lead each voice properly to the chord after the pivot. So 
So the main thing here in this example is to see and identify and recognize that this chord here, which is A flat, C, E flat, F sharp, in C minor, that is a German sixth. The pivot chord, yeah. You can you can you can be pretty certain that going into the test that if you have a progression and there's an enharmonic pivot chord, the pivot chord is either going to be German 6 by 7 enharmonic or it's going to be 7 7 enharmonic. How are we going to do one How are we going to do one Seems like we had these same chords before. How does A flat C E flat F sharp function in the new key of C sharp minor? Well, just like that. I show it with my pivot chord. G sharp, B sharp, D sharp, F sharp. Don't move the notes of the pivot chord, just enharmonically respell what you need so that it fits in the new key. And now I can see that this is the seventh of the G sharp chord, and the seventh must come down by step, which I did take. I took it across the bar. You may also recall earlier this unit that we talked about how it's right after one of these enharmonic pivot chords that you have the choice. You can either write down a double bar line and immediately change the key signature to the new key, or like I did, you can forget that and you can use accidentals on basically every note. But don't forget, when you modulate to one of these distantly related keys, using an enharmonic pivot chord, the new key is probably going to require tons and tons of accidents. But the, if you have figured bass like this, that's why I kind of like figured bass. The figured bass should be mine to you. To you with all of its symbols. Thirteen, but in four voices. Remember what three notes to read out or omit. You read out the right, the eleven, the fifth. That's right. Good. So what I have left then for the four voices is the root, the third, the seventh, and the thirteenth. And remember that the 13th, the 9th, and the 11th, those extended notes, I really, I really would like you to have them always in the highest voice. So they're sticking way out there. Even when you part right, put the 9th, 11th, or 13th in the soprano. The next one is an altered dominant, seventh in first and root. <laughs> Spell a regular dominant seventh. <coughs> this symbol, sharp five, means to raise the fifth a half step. Start with your standard plain J regular dominant seventh. Spell that, and then just raise the fifth a half step. That's what I did. It's D F sharp, not A C, but D F sharp A sharp C. And it's a person going. The next one to spell a 5 11 chord in four voices. 
maybe you can see from that which two notes do I omit from the fourth? The third and the fifth. And I know it looks like there's a big gap in that chord, a big gaping hole or something. That's okay though. For those extended chords in the fourth one. Next one asks for a flat minor six. This is one of those chromatic medias. How do I read that label, that symbol? That symbol? Well, okay, the flat in front of the Roman numeral means the root has been lowered a half step. So uh, the root of a six chord normal in B major would be G sharp. Lowering in a half step makes the root G natural, right? It doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a literal flat all the time. It just means lower than half step. G natural is the root, and the small lowercase Roman numeral 6 means minor. You know how to spell a minor triad on G natural? Yes. Make sure you include all your accidentals. G natural, B flat, D natural. Common tone diminished seventh of one. Remember, this seventh chord needs to have the same note as the root of the chord it embellishes in it. So, what's the root of a one chord in D? So, that's easy. That's D, right? You just need to spell a fully diminished seventh chord in this contains a D. That's all I'm supposed to I did mine as E sharp, G sharp, D, D. But you could do it as B, D, F, A flat. You could do it as D, F, A flat, C flat. Anyone that has a D in it. The last one on this page, common tone diminished seven of five. What's the root of a five chord in A flat? E flat? Can you spell or think of a diminished seventh chord that contains an E flat in it? I use F sharp A C E flat. But you could also use A C E flat G flat. C flat E flat G flat B double flat. Mm -hmm. you can use that. Probably four different ways to spell that. section 7, right? Last class. I'm going to skip section 8 because that part right in is like mammoth. Oh, by the way, what I, what I plan to do is between after we're done here, um, before I leave today, I'm going to post a, um, a PDF of my answer key on Canvas in the assignments page. So that you can, you can look at these problems close, more closely you can compare them against the answers, and you know, hopefully that will help, especially things that I could not even get to in the class. So we've got just a few minutes. Maybe we can go to the last section, section 9. You'll be able to see this on the canvas. Um, I don't know how much sense it's going to make to you until you actually analyze it, but the very first example is in E minor. We just want you to do a Roman, Roman numeral analysis. And then in each example, circle two chords that form that are chromatic medians of each other. Two consecutive chords that are in chromatic medium relationship. Turns out this minor triad <coughs> and this major minor seven chord are double chromatic medians. Let me think about this for a second. Oh, yeah. Don't be misled by the inversion. The root of this chord here is. The root of the chord is off the bow, it's not in the base. 
A, is that a major or minor third away from F sharp to the of this point? Yes. So they are in immediate relationship. And they have zero terms in common. The next one. The first two chords of that example are in a single chromatic unit relationship. I know this is probably going a little fast to use, but I'll just finish the last one. And again, I'll, I'll post this answer to you on the okay. Either circle would be fine. There are two sets of single chromatic medians in this passage here, but you only need to find the circle one here. Either the one and three flat, flat three, I should say, those are single chromatic medians, then the flat three and the following dominant seven are also in some of the So between now and Monday, I would really encourage you to take the time you need to look at these problems on here, compare them with my answer key, do a little studying that way. Also, go back and maybe look through some of your notes that you took this unit. Um, you don't have to have all the peripherals necessarily memorized, that's okay. But just remember some of the basics about, you know, that makes sense. Like German 6 is at my mind for 5, 7. The fully diminished seventh chord and its enharmonic possibilities. Um, the, the, the definition of um, chromatic medians. Look, just remember the, the big basics for each of the topics that we talked about. I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I, I saw this a lot on the, a lot of the <laughs> assignments that we had. So with these, uh, like those five, one, uh, flat major three, two, uh, dominant seven. Um, is there a way that we can look for, like, so it, it goes from 1 to 3, which is obviously a uh, immediate, relationship. immediate relationship, but then it goes back uh, to the key, and that's sometimes hard to see. Is there a way that we can, like, specifically look for that and, like, share it with one that Well, I would say the fact that the chord that's analyzed as a chromatic chord there, the flat 3, you notice how it has a lot of accidentals? a lot of pitches that don't fit in the key. I would say that would be a big clue. If you have a chromatic chord and you can't label it as like a, you know, a secondary dominant or secondary leading form or something like that, um, just, I, yeah, just keep in mind, entertain the idea that you know, there's, there's three chords and there's six chords that can be altered like that. So I guess it's mainly just if, when you find a chord that has a lot of accidentals that don't fit in the key, just think about, well, could it be an augmented six? Could it be a Neapolitan? You know, what type of chord is it? Is it fully diminished? If it's fully diminished seven, then it's not going to be one of those. Yeah. It's going to be a CT diminished seven, or it's going to be a, a secondary leading chord. So, yeah. I know it's not easy, but there are ways to sift through, as long as you know what you're looking at, as long as you're yeah, paying attention. So. Do feel free to come see me between now and the test on Monday. I'll be in my office this afternoon. And I think we gotta go because there's a class coming up, so thank you. Well, at least we get to hear our stronger room again, right?
Right, yeah. Not like last week.